good morning everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be something a little bit different. So today we're going to be doing a locomotive uh, project. So the locomotive that we're going to be working on in this video is actually my Lima B class, specifically B84. Now there's a lot of work to do to this locomotive so basically this video I'm going to be taking you through what's wrong with it and what I'm going to be doing to it to bring it up to more, I guess, my standards. So there's a bit of work to do to this, um, detail-wise and also prototypically wise. So uh, basically, this video is going to be all about um, correcting those issues that are wrong with it and making it more prototypical. So let me show you what will be done to this locomotive. All right, so. Uh, First, one of the first jobs I need to do to this locomotive is actually bring it forward in time. Now, how I'm actually going to be doing that is I need to get rid of this piece here where I'm pointing to. Now, I'm not sure if like the technical name for that, but if anyone knows, then let me know in the comments. So, basically, B classes that were the B class was the Victorian Railways B class was introduced in 1951 and I, f I believe like a few years after they were introduced uh, they had this piece cut off. Now I'm not sure the technical name for this piece but again if anyone knows let me know. Um, as you can see Lima have modelled this locomotive with that piece on. Now I understand why they did that to avoid production costs of making a body which has this piece and a body which doesn't have this piece so I understand why they did that but for this particular locomotive and Basically, if you're modelling any B classes from about 1960s, 1965 onwards, they didn't actually have this piece. Um, basically, they had a little bit of a modification program which removed this piece. So, this, this B class is not correct. So, I need to get rid of this piece. So, that's one job. Um, and, none, and another thing that's not correct about this model is the pilots themselves. So basically, Lima modelled this unit with pilots that have the black stripes. Now, this is correct and isn't correct. Now, if you're wanting to model this particular B class as it was outshopped from the paint shop when it was re sprayed in 1983, 1984, um, it didn't have these black stripes, it was just an all orange pilot. Uh, from about 1985 it received the black stripes, although I'm going to model mine which has an all orange pilot. So that's another thing that's wrong with it. Alright, so with the locomotive body shell off, another thing that I want to correct with this is this edge here. This is not painted. Don't know why they didn't paint it when it was painted from the factory. As you can see, the rest of the body is all nice and presented with the paint job but then there's just this edge which is unpainted so I need to paint that up and also in regards to the chassis we can see that we have this open area here now this is going to be perfect because I'm going to be adding a driver there so basically I'm going to make like a little platform for the driver to sit on so essentially a false floor and I've got a driver here so I'm going to cut his legs off and um, glue him to the false floor that I make and I'll see if I can make up like a little control stand so yeah we're going to add a driver and then obviously I'm going to be weathering it so a lot to do to this locomotive so um, anyways let's get started Alright, so starting off this project, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this piece off. Now, uh, I'm going to use the Dremel for this job, as that will cut it the best and also the quickest. I'm not going to bother using a craft knife for that job. Now, one thing I do need to make sure of, if I just zoom in for you, we can see that we have some kind of rivet detail. Now, we need to make sure that we preserve this, because we don't want to be cutting that off. So. When it comes to cutting it with the Dremel, I'm going to get as close as I can, but still leave a little bit of um, material left. That way I can then come in and sand it um, flush later on. 
So uh, that's what I'm going to do. So let's get started. Alright, so that's one side cut off, and then I'll do the same thing to the other side off camera. Alright, so I've just cut both pieces off um, camera, or well, one of them on camera and the other off. So if we just zoom in, as you can see, we've still managed to preserve that rivet detail that I did not want to lose um, when I cut those pieces off. So that's worked perfectly. So now all I need to do. I just need to clean up uh, any rough edges and I'll do that off camera and then we can get on to the other bits. Alright, so a um, bit of time later and I've now cleaned up the excess material so it's now nice and flat. So I can run my fingers and stuff, it's nice and flat. But as you can see, you really got to take your time with the sanding so that way you preserve all this detail because you do not want to get rid of it. So. That's done, and uh, whilst I'm in cutting mode, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to get a start on the cab interior for the chassis, so let's do that. Alright, so I've done a bit of testing off camera, and I've got this piece of plastic card cut out, just an old piece, and it turns out if I just lay that on top of there like that, that's actually the perfect height, and then I can take my little figure here, and I've cut it, cut his legs off about the knees and then if I just super glue that about there that's actually the perfect height for the figure to sit now I will add some kind of control stand I'll make my own controls for that so yeah this um, interior should look pretty nice alright so a bit of time later and the interior is all done uh, as you can see it's very basic so we got what looks to be a some kind of control board and then I've got the person glued in now I understand it's not the most detailed one you'll ever see, but for me it's good enough. So I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll paint it, and then put it in the, um, well, this bit basically. So yeah, anyways, let's go do that. Alright, so the interior is now done. Now I've added a little bit more detail, like I've added this like center console here. Um, having looked at like videos of B classes, like the interiors, they did have like this center console. So I'll glue that about there. So I think that will be pretty good. Um, it lines up with the. If I just zoom you out a bit. Oops. Yeah, so it lines up pretty good with the windows. So um, I'll glue that down, and uh, we'll then go from there. Alright, there we go, so that's now installed, so we'll let that dry and then we can paint it up. Alright, so the interior is now done, um, it's all painted, it's just drying at the moment. Now, I know it's not the most detailed interior you'll ever see, but for me, it's good enough. So, pretty much that's all the work to the chassis done. So, what I need to do now is respray the pilots, um, all orange, and then with the body, I need to paint this edge so 
let's go do that. Alright, so starting off um, with the painting of the body and everything, I've got the paint in the airbrush cup and the paint in question is this one. It's the Scale Model of Supply V-Line Orange. Uh, the Scale Model of Supply is a fantastic company for paints and also other various painting and weathering products. Um, I've been using their products for a while now and I've had no issues. So I've thoroughly masked up the bogies and also the body. I um, just need to paint this bit but anyways. So all the masking's done so I've got the airbrush ready so um, let's go ahead and paint. <laughs> time later and the pilots have been sprayed. I gave those about three light coats and that's pretty much all they needed. I've also painted this bit up here um, orange just so it looks more presentable. Done the same to the other one as you can see. Um, I've also painted the edge on the body shell as well so that looks a lot more presentable. So yeah so far that's about half the painting work done. So what I'll do is I'll let this all dry and I'll reassemble it, see how it looks. And then we're pretty much now ready for the weathering stage. Although I'm going to leave that to another day as um, we're nearing the end of the day here. Um, it's currently about probably almost 5 o'clock. So I'm going to leave the weathering for another day. And uh, I'll see you when we do that. Alright, so it's now a few days later since I worked on this and as I said in the previous clip we're now ready for the weathering. Now, as this model is quite an old model, um, I really do need to clean it properly. So, I've got, if I just get into shot, I've got a container with some hot soapy water and that's going to really strip off the dirt that is on this model. Keep in mind this model is quite old now, so it's probably like over 20 years old, so maybe even 30, over 30 years old probably, so yeah this model is very very old, so this has obviously had a life before me on someone else's layout, and then it's obviously been in a model shop, and you know it's had a life there, so this is going to be riddled with grime and I really need to get rid of it before I apply any sort of weathering. So I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll put you back on when it's done. Alright so it's been a bit of time since the previous clip and we're now ready for the airbrushing. So I've cleaned up the chassis, uh, the bogies have all been cleaned up as well as the body. Uh, I've just masked up the cab interior because I don't want any um, paint getting on that. So. For the airbrushing stage, we're only going to be using one colour, which is Umbrella Number 29 Dark Earth. Um, this is my preferred colour for using. This is the preferred colour that I like to use for spraying the underframes of locomotives and rolling stock. And then for the rest of the weathering, it's all going to be hand painted. So I'll get into that next. But uh, anyways, let's get onto the airbrushing.
so pretty much all the airbrushing is done. So I've, I've done the bogies and also on the motor bogie, I have, if I just get into shot there, I have weathered these bits because you'll be able to see those if I don't weather them. Now on the body, um, I just added a little bit of like grime going along the base. Just to zoom you out there. So yeah, I just added a little bit of grime going out there, a bit up around here, according to the photos. Now, it's not the neatest at the moment. Um, I will come back in and uh, neaten it up next. But uh, anyways, all the airbrushing is done, so I'm going to clean it all up, and then I can do all the brush effects. Okay, so for stage two of the weathering, now that all the airbrush work is done, um, I need to focus on cleaning some of this up a bit, uh, particularly these bits here. So the one here, and then the one here, I need to clean those up a bit. Because um, with the photos that I'm using, not sure how well you guys can see that, but if I just zoom in, not sure how well they come up on camera. But, um, I noticed in the photos where those cab bits are, there's like some streaking, so I'm going to use those photos as reference to do the same on the model here. So, uh, let me show you how I do that. Alright, so now we're going to um, clean this up a bit because it doesn't look very good. So, I'm going to create some streaking. So, all you need is a cotton bud and uh, I've got a little bit of um, enamel thinners in this um, lid here from the enamel thinners bottle. So I'm going to take my cotton bud, dip it in the uh, enamel thinners, and just wipe a bit of, and just wipe a bit off on the paper towel. And then I'm just going to basically just start wiping it off. Like that to create some streaking effects basically. And I can also roll it like that. So yeah, I can create some nice sort of effects doing it like this. So uh, I'm going to have a go at that on the other side and then I'll put you back on. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is focus on the roof of the model. Now for that I'm going to be using some uh, wash effects. So I've got some Tamiya XF1 Black. Uh, I've, just I've just diluted this down with some water and I'll just keep it in the tin. So the way I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to apply it to the surface and then using a clean cotton bud I'm going to wipe it off to create like this uh, streaking effect so I'll show you how I do that. So if I just zoom you in, basically, I'm not sure how well the camera's picking that up, but it's left like this sort of streaking effect. Now I am going to add more layers to it, obviously, and that, that way I can build up the effect. So I'm going to keep going at that, and then I'll put you back on once it's done. Alright, so with all the uh, wash effects done to the roof, um, we're pretty much now ready to work on the sides. So 
Where these grills are, this is a perfect area to add dirt to. So again, using my black wash, I'm going to add dirt to those. Now it may take several coats to build up the um, overall sort of amount of wash that I want in there, but um, I'll keep going at this and hopefully we should get a result that I'm happy with. Alright, so it's been a bit of time later and all the um, wash work is now done and I'm happy with where it's at. So I'm going to let this all dry thoroughly and then we'll move on to the powder work. Alright, so whilst I'm waiting for the body to dry, I'm actually going to paint the wheels. So I've got some brown acrylic paint here. Take my little brush and just basically I'm just going to paint the wheels um, in this colour. Uh, I'm doing it by brush because it's um, a lot easier to control with the paint. And it's also less work rather than using an airbrush. And also, painted wheels look much nicer than unpainted wheels. So anyways, I'm going to keep going at this, and then uh, I'll put it back on. Alright, so we're now up to the final stages of weathering, and that is to use some weathering powders. So, with the brown, I'm just going to focus on around the base of the uh, locomotive. And then, for the roof, I've got some black, so I'll use that. Um, I'll also use the brown on the bogies and the fuel tank as well. So, um, oops. So yeah, um, I'm going to apply some weathering powders to this. much the weathering on the B-Class is done. So they've now been matte varnished so all I need to do now is wait for the matte varnish to dry and then I'll start reassembling it and I'll put you back on when it's reassembled. Alright there we go guys so that will complete the project on my Lima B-Class. Overall very happy with the project and how it came out and uh, certainly looks a lot different to how it did at the start of this video. Now uh, one thing I will point out is I noticed after I matte varnished it there's some sort of like whitish sort of residue on um, the surface. Uh, I don't know 
and maybe if that will go away or not but I'll have to see hopefully it does but anyways very happy with this project and um, I really really like it so anyways thank you all so much for watching hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think in the comments below and of course I'll see you all in my next video so take care stay safe and have a nice day bye everyone